You're an employee of an international organization located in the U.S. The visa you need to move to the U.S. is a G visa. Watch this video till the end to learn all about it. Hey everyone, I'm Behnam from the Visa Library. This channel gives visa information and the latest news and updates. First things first, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell and download the free cheat sheet my team has prepared from the link in the description. You should also follow us on Instagram and Facebook to get the latest visa news and updates. Now let's begin. First, let me explain the G visa. Officials and employees of international organizations going to the US to do their official tasks must apply for a G visa. People who work in an international organization and officials are not authorized to enter the US for their official duties under any other visa category. They can't use the visa waiver program either. People like diplomats, government officials, and employees who are employed by international organizations in the US and their families need to get G1 to G5 visa. People who work for NATO need to get NATO visa. I should note that countries' presidents must get an A1 visa. The purpose of their trip to the US doesn't matter. Officials entering the US for non-governmental purpose, such as commerce or tourism, must also apply for a proper visa defined for the purpose of their visit. Let me ask you a question first. Who is eligible to receive a G visa? Here are the qualified people who can get a G visa. 1. Members of a recognized government with a permanent mission in an international company. Their family members must apply for a G1 visa. 2. Agents of a recognized government visiting the U.S. for the short term to participate in conferences of an international organization. If their family is with them, they need a G2 visa. 3. Agents of a government not officially recognized by the U.S. The family of this group must apply for a G3 visa. 4. People selected for a place at an international organization in the U.S. like the United Nations. The family of this group must apply for a G4 visa. Let me tell you this. People working for domestic employees of a J1 or J4 visa holders can apply for a J5 visa to enter the U.S. The visa issued to NATO employees is divided into seven categories. The visa covers national representatives, international employees, and their qualified family members, and the NATO 7 permission is defined for personal employees of NATO 1 to 6 visa holders. In some cases, Army and NATO forces are exempt from passports and visa requirements. If a person enters the U.S. with visa-exempt status, he or she must present an official military ID card and NATO travel orders. Their family members do not include visa and passport exemptions. Now that you know who is qualified to receive a G visa, how should you apply for it? Stay a bit longer to find out. To get a G visa, first you must fill out an online application form called Form DS-160. You must visit the U.S. Department of State website to complete the form. Don't rush to Google it. I have put the link in the description. After completing this form, a confirmation page will be issued that you must save and print. To reapply for the visa, J1 to 4 or NATO 6 visa holders must submit form DS-160. 1648. The link is in the description again. While completing the form, you must submit a photo in the defined format. You can watch the video we have prepared about US photo requirements on our channel. After completing the form, you must gather the supporting documents. Here is a list of them. One is your passport. It must be valid for at least six months over the date you're going to stay in the US. If not, there must be exemptions under country-specific agreements. Two, the international organization or employer must write a diplomatic note or travel order for your official mission to enter the U.S. This note must include this information, the name of the international organization, employee's names, date of birth, his or her post, the aim of travel, a brief explanation of the responsibilities, time of the travel, and time expected period staying in the U.S. Number three, information about any dependents joining the employee in the U.S. is needed. Information like the names, relationships, dates of birth, and everything else. Number four is employment contract. Both the employee and employer must sign the contract and include this information. Description of duties, hours of work, minimum wage, 
payment, overtime work, transportation to and from the United States, request terms of employment. This was a general list of supporting documents. The U.S. Embassy could ask for further supporting documents. It depends on your case, nationality, and their decision. After you're done gathering the supporting documents, you must schedule an appointment for your visa interview at the U.S. Embassy or consulate in your home country. The meeting must be with the U.S. Embassy in your home country, the country where you are residing, or where you are physically present. You can find the list of U.S. Embassies and consulates on the Department of State website. The link is in the description again. You often do not need an interview for a G visa, but the U.S. Embassy might require you to have one. Visit the U.S. Embassy or a consulate on the scheduled date and bring all the supporting documents. There is a fee for U.S. visa, but G visa and NATO visa applicants do not have to pay any fees. The Embassy also takes your biometrics digital photo and the scan of your fingerprints. When you meet the embassy officials, submit the documents to them and follow their instructions. The rules and regulations might be a bit different for the US embassy you have visited. You must figure out the procedure with them. It takes time until the embassy decides whether you are eligible to receive a G visa or not. The embassy informs you how to receive your visa. You can move to the US and begin your duties when you get the visa label on your passport. When your visa expires, you can renew it, but you must be eligible and submit the required documents. 1. A passport that is valid for at least 6 months over the date period of your stay in the US. 2. Form I-94 or Arrival Departure Record Card. 3. Form DS-1648. After filling out this form, a confirmation page will be sent that you must save. 4. A photo that must have been taken within the past 6 months. Alright then, this was all you must know about USG visa. If you have questions, write them down in the comment section. The visa library team will answer them. Before you leave, like this video, hit the bell, and download the free PDF file that my team has prepared from the description. You should also follow the visa library on Instagram and Facebook to get the latest visa news and updates. Until the next video, thank you all for watching.